Welcome to another Iron Man episode. What I'm doing right now to begin the video is I'm actually doing some overgrown idols. I want to get a lot of woodcutting progress done in this video and that does include making the sentinel outfit which I do have some pieces for. Admittedly I have the entire nature sentinel trunks which is all the three legs put into one. And you can see the set bonus right there. If you want to read the entire thing, you can pause the video. But essentially, it is a super important set to have for woodcutting. And actually, doing overgrown idols is decent experience. It's definitely not, not the best in the game. But what it does have as an advantage is that you actually get more of the sentinel fragments when doing the overgrown idols. So that's why I will be doing, during this video, as many of the overgrown idols as I can. Because, as I said, I do want to get the entire set. Probably in this video would be nice to get. I only need one chest, one boots, one helmet and three gloves, so six pieces. I actually just spent some of these sentinel fragments. From getting like 500,000 woodcut experience at the overgrown idols, I got like 9,000 fragments. So that is almost three pieces, so it shouldn't really be that bad to get all the pieces I need for the set. I definitely will have the entire set before going to crystal trees, which was a goal I wanted to get. There is actually an activity that I haven't really been doing or keeping up on my Iron Man and that is the Penguin Hide and Seek. You can get 10 points every single week and I'm at 13 now and that's really only from like clicking any penguins that I see around the world. And you can get, as I said, 10 points per week and uh, you can buy a huge experience lamp that's like 60,000 experience, you know, like the um, monthly event that you can do at the Troll Invasion. One of those you get basically every single week plus two points that you can spend in any skill that you want. So I'm probably going to just put that on a slow skill like runecrafting, something that I really don't want to have to grind out, or maybe uh, something like archaeology, but I'll probably have to do a lot of archaeology anyways to get components and stuff like that. So probably we'll put the experience in runecrafting most likely. I do actually want to take some time here to talk about what is going to be released the 26th of June, which is the first front in the Elder God Wars dungeon. And I just want to quickly talk about what my plans for this is on my Iron Man account and some of the rewards that you can get here from the new boss. There is uh, more rewards than just what the boss can drop, but uh, I'm mainly going to focus on the boss as I am probably the most interested in that and maybe these slayer creatures as well that you can uh, kill if you have 92 slayer. So the boss itself has a normal and a hard mode and it has four phases which is kind of reminding me of maybe Telos, it has quite a lot of phases but as there is a normal and a hard mode I am assuming that the normal mode might be like doing Telos on maybe like 50% enrage or maybe even 100% or just below that. And the hard mode is going to be what it sounds like really a lot harder because the rewards from normal mode is tier 85 magic gloves that enhances your combust and your dragon's breath ability. And which makes them probably pretty useful by the way in PVMing, but uh, it is a question of are they better than Cinder Banes? Maybe. We will have to see how good they are. Also you can unlock a new prayer book which is the prayer book of Jazz or something like that. I, I'm going to assume it's just a um, DPS alternative to the art, uh, Armadillo book or something like that, which could be pretty good and if it's easy to recharge through the Elder God Wars dungeon it might be a very good thing for Iron Man instead of having to do clue scrolls. And the last thing you can unlock is a Concentrated Blast Ability Codex, which is going to make that ability even better. So, should be some pretty, pretty good rewards from normal mode, even if you are not able to do the hard mode. But, from the hard mode, you will be able to unlock a tier 95 Magic Staff. That is huge, because that means the first tier 95 weapon is in the game. Except, of course, the tier 97 technically in the Inquisitor staff and stuff like that. But that is not really a tier 97. It's kind of a hidden tier 97. This is just a straight up tier 95 for any content that you go to. And uh, I would assume that the content should be pretty hard if you want to achieve the best magic weapon in the game. I mean, it's better than doing Telos. Like, getting the Staff of Sliske is if the hard mode mode or the hard mode of this boss is easier than Telos at the higher end rages, then there is no reason to do Telos for the Staff of Sliski anymore. So I am definitely on the release day of this, going to try to kill the boss, 
and I'm going to hopefully be able to make a beginner's guide to it so you can get your first kills the first day of release. Maybe on the second if it turns out to be a very difficult boss even on normal mode. And then I might make a loot video for it depending on, uh, as I said, how hard the boss is and how many kills I will do, we will see. But that is pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Finally, I can make the last pieces. So now we should be able to, if I unequip these, I should be able to combine them all to have the full nature set. And as you can see, I have the miniature, miniature evil tree every day. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but uh, we're going to try it out. I've heard it's pretty good experience. Let's see if I can spawn the evil tree here. Uh, yes, spawn the evil tree. And it's just a small one, I guess. And then you can cut this every day. Oh my god, 341 experience every single time. And how long does this actually last? I'm at 2 to 10 experience now. And uh, let's see where I end up after cutting this for a while. Oh, it's uh, almost exactly 20,000 experience. So 20,000 woodcutting experience every single day that I can do just because I have this set. Of course, also the set bonus is super good. So uh, woodcutting from now on should be uh, pretty fast compared to what it was before. So this is pretty big now. I just hit 94 woodcutting and I already have two locations on my Grace of the Elves. I have Jadinko Lair and Overgrown Idols and I can't really uh, unlock more right now. So I'm going to reattune this one, the Overgrown Idols. And I'm going to take Active Crystal Tree and uh, now it should be on the necklace. Active Crystal Tree and I just click it and I teleport to an active crystal tree so it's super chill and afk and every cut should be like 450 maybe a bit more experience than that but it is just very afk you can just chill here and uh, i think that you get 456k yeah so i can just teleport to uh, new, new crystal trees with a necklace every time and just afk here so it's very nice i'm just going to uh, reset the experience actually at uh, 2.6 million almost and uh, yeah, this is probably how I'm going to get 99 woodcutting. Also, the crystal geos that drop, I think they give gems and stuff like that. But I will have to look that up and I don't know if they are, are that useful. I have admittedly been doing a lot of woodcutting. So I'm going to take a break and I'm actually just killing rabbits here. It's kind of weird maybe, but it is actually for the player-owned farm. I need a specific type of uh, bunny and uh, put in the farm to harvest for, I think, rabbit's teeth. And then I already have like 25 bullhorns in the bank from when I was trying to get that uh, chocolate, vanilla and strawberry cow for the uh, Dagon by mystery. But if I do get rabbit's teeth, I can make a lot of hunter or extreme hunter potions that I can then use to do charming moths, which is going to give me a decent amount of agility, but mostly hunter experience. And that is going to be probably the way that I go for 99 hunter and along the way get probably to like 91 or 92 agility. I actually didn't take that long. These are a bit more rare to get, but you can see that it's called Relecan Cream Rabbit. And uh, it's unchecked and it is a female. So if this one grows and I uh, gather its produce, I'm going to get the teeth. But you don't actually get that from the normal ones. That's why I had to go here. I might try to grind for another one so I can get some more produce. So I don't have to get like two or three every single time. So I might be here for a bit longer. That's like five kills later and we get a male. Perfect. I can actually go and breed these now and have an infinite supply of the teeth. Now if you... Now, if you don't know what these charming moths are, I made like 15 hunter urns, of course, and I'm just wearing a full black dragonite because it is in the wilderness and having at least some armor is nice. Bringing my enhanced Yakui stick and I have my extreme hunter potions. I could only make three right now with those rabbits first produce. Luckily, they do grow and breed pretty fast, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But you basically click on these and I have agility and hunter up here. And you just click like this and it catches automatically for you for a pretty decent amount of time. And you can see, okay, now it uh, was a pretty short one, but you also get some charms. And you can see here the experience is actually very good. I get 813 per catch and no double experience or anything like that. And also 150 agility experience every single time. And I also get the experience from the urns, of course. So it is a very good method to get 99 Hunter compared to doing uh, box traps or uh, traps uh, trapping uh, Godja Dinkos on Anachronia, which is a lot more click intensive. So I've used a total of 11 Extreme Hunter potions for those, and I got almost 1.8 million Hunter experience from that and 250,000 agility experience, and I'm very close to 90. 
I did some calculations and I'll need about 42 to 45 extreme hunter potion for those to be able to get 99 hunter, which is not that bad, but it is going to take some time on my player owned farm, but it is something that I want to get done as soon as possible, and overall when I get 99 hunter, I'll probably have like a million experience on agility as well, so I should be around the 91, 92 agility from just doing hunter training as well. And I do actually want to do some mini games, maybe to be able to get the silver hawk boots and just casually buy feathers from the traveling merchant. I think I have already 100 feathers or even more than that in the bank. To get some more casual agility experience, meanwhile leveling other skills, you can just have a look in the bank real quick. I have 143 feathers. So uh, it is a very slow thing to do because it is $700 and I think that... Is a very long time of doing mini games, but maybe there is a mini game I can do on Spotlight that is pretty efficient. But uh, it is some big grinds I have to do now with the player on farm, get more extreme hunter potions, make some more urns, and I've already been grinding a lot of skills in this video. 94 wood cutting and 90 hunter, also very close to 90 agility, so we're getting close to 90 base with only these left after that. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, leave a like to support my videos and all that. Make them get more recommended to people. Also, you can click any of the videos on the screen now if you want to see more content. Have a good one, guys. Take care.